Hi everyone, welcome to Arden Talk. Arden Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. Thank you so much for watching today. We aim to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and be inspired by. So we embrace all the arts, the traditional and the spiritual arts. Today, we're going to explore a poet, a published author, and we're going to be exploring three of his books. Before we get into that, I just wanna mention if anyone who is watching is going through any type of obstacles or challenges in their life, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical, I'd recommend to you to jump onto our Art and Talk YouTube channel. And we have a playlist called Poetry and Healing. And the reason that I'm recommending this is that many of the poets who have had interviews with us have been very candid with a variety of different obstacles and challenges and different things they've experienced in their life and how writing and poetry has been instrumental to their healing. And many of the guest poets have recommended whether you're a poet or writer, even if you aren't, to um, keep a journal and to also, you know, practice and discipline yourself in terms of uh, writing and to see how that can also be uh, paramount to your healing as well. So we have about maybe 11 or 12 videos in that playlist. So there's definitely something for everyone. So we think you'll be inspired by that and draw some encouragement from that as well. And if you're interested in getting your creative juices flowing, uh, you can go ahead also on our YouTube channel. We have a playlist called Poetry and the Creative Process. And again, here, many of the poets have shared with us very in depth about uh, their creative process. And it really helps to open our eyes and opens our mind to new ways of seeing and new ways of perceiving. So even if you're not a poet or you're not a, not an author, a writer, you'll still be able to um, get some inspiration into the creative process and then you can apply it uh, to your life in different ways. So we, we think that you'll enjoy those. And again, and with that, we have about uh, 12 videos for you to watch with that as well. All right, so do stay connected with us on social media, on our YouTube channel, and also on our Facebook page. Thank you again for being here. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest poet for today, Alex Dunlop. Alex, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. I'm so excited to find out about your, your uh, poetry and, and your journey and your new books. All right, yeah. So uh, like you said, my name's Alex Dunlop. I, uh, and based in Florida and Tallahassee. I went to college at FSU and kind of just never left. So yeah. Um, so I'm gonna read a poem today from my second book actually, uh, No Context. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Temptations, Wispy Whispers. Uh, it's about basically what you were saying. I was going through a tough time and uh, maybe drinking a little more than I should have and uh, I, this poem kind of came about because of that. So Temptations Whispy Whispers. Chase you with the shot of whiskey, wincing at the burn. Temptation and her wispy whispers, lessons yet to learn. I'll lean in close flirtatiously, my words ring warm and true. Kiss me once, you gorgeous minx, this is my dare to you. We'll fall in love tomorrow, for we're busy all tonight. Please undress your fears, my dear, grip me close, hold me tight. Your deep blue eyes, they vex me. Perhaps I'll take a swim. I've shown you once, you sh I'll show you twice that you are no mere whim. I loved you then, I'll love you now. I loved you here and there. Let's not get tangled up, my love. Please let down your hair. Put down your guard and let me in. I know it's rather risky, but you must know this is me talking, not the shots of whiskey. Mm. So yeah, that was actually I was trying to come out of a depressive state and I uh, was dating somebody who was not happy about my drinking. And so that actually got me to stop for, stop, stop as much for sure. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so that, that's the poem. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I guess I was going to the background. Like, like you were saying, uh, writing for me is really kind of therapeutic um, I always wanted to be a writer. I remember the, the first thing I ever wrote, I was in first grade. My friend and I wrote a comic book about a, a movie we had just seen, Indiana Jones. And I was just like, I, I always wanted to be a writer. Uh, I never wanted to be a poet though. I, I never really liked poetry until I came to FSU 
and I had to take a, a poetry class because they said you, you if you want to be a writing major you have to be well rounded in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I took a poetry class and it was seven people that was it, the smallest class I've ever been a part of and the teacher said I'm gonna it's a three-hour class and he goes I'm gonna cancel the first class because you guys have to see some weird stuff so you guys are gonna go to a nearby graveyard because there's a witch's grave in it that has a poem written on the tombstone and I want you to go read the poem and write a poem about that and bring it in and that was just such a, it was so kind of or, an organic teaching lesson as opposed to like the teachers who were like, no, poetry is this. Poetry is defined. It is a very specific style. And it, it's, it's not that at all. Poetry is whatever you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, if you're ever going through a hard time, write, write stuff down. You, you just feel better about it you can go back and visit it leave <clears throat> sorry years later and be like wow i was doing that at this point in time mm -hmm. like I, I actually read one of the first poems i wrote three years ago and uh i was like wow i can't believe i actually like felt like this at one point like that was not okay <laughs> but it helped make writing help really help me get better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm really glad that you shared that um poetry experience um, in, in the school environment, because I, I think that that was such a great way to kind of begin, because you weren't really into poetry, as you said, and the, this teacher kind of really was um, being very unconventional with the experience and, and um, you know, with his teaching methodology. Um, yeah, yeah, so that- Very, that's, very, very strange, but I, yeah. I enjoyed the heck out of the class, and about what we did was we wrote a poem every week we'd bring into class read it out loud and then he goes okay now we're going to take take your poem we're going to put it in the middle of the circ speaking circle and we're going to tear it apart and we'll give you the pieces back and you're going to make a new poem later and they, they so the other people students would rip, tear into it and tell you everything you did wrong everything that you could do better and you're like yeah those are actually good notes like it, they're not like telling you your, your subject matter is wrong it's like they're saying you could have done this to be more poetic or you could have done this to be to convey the meaning more mm -hmm. and that about halfway through the semester I brought a poem in and they like after I read it they all stopped and said you got it you you actually understand what you're doing now because I was always like I was the least talented in the beginning of class but they were like well you you actually understand what you're doing you're, you're actually becoming a poet now and I'm like oh no mm -hmm. elaborate, <laughs> <is a> <laughs> um Alex elaborate a little bit more on what that means you understand what you're doing now as a poet share with us a little bit more about what that means because that was a huge milestone yeah yeah so the anyone can write words that rhyme on a page and not all poems have to rhyme a lot of my best ones don't um but in my in my head before the class i was like so what i was taught poems are they rhyme they have an a b a b rhyme scheme and that is that's how they do it period and so i had stuck with that and i, I decided to break out of that one time and i wrote about something that was actually real like i'd been trying to write about these um like thoughts and feelings that no one that you couldn't really grasp yet it, there was nothing real about them because I hadn't felt them. I'm just writing about things that I didn't actually feel. And uh, the poem that made people stop and go, oh my God, this was, this is such a great poem was uh, ironically about a fried chicken place that in Tallahassee that I, I always, I frequented and I really, really enjoyed it. And they said, this is the first thing that's real because you're actually speaking from experience, but in a way that's, that conveys what it means to you. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a matter of just like explaining what it is in a rhyming way. It was like this, they get a feeling from the words you're writing. They understand the meaning behind it, even though they've never been there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's really beautiful. So I'm going to be correct to say that it like the feeling and the level of joy placed into it that you feel as the writer and then kind of conveying that irrespective of what it's about is is a main component of kind of being in that space of getting it yeah you have to write about what you're passionate about uh whether it's whether it's a joy and love loving or a longing and a hurt uh that's uh he always said 
quote, uh, another, another little quote from him was always, you'll become a poet the day you write about what you said you would never write about. Mm -hmm. Well, I sound so, like an amazing teacher. He was, he was insane, but I loved him. And he made me really fall in love with poetry. And we, like I said, it was one, we met once a week for three hours. So for three hours, we were trapped in a room with this guy who didn't, who, who had never, it was like his first time being an actual professor too. So, but it was a, he was such a great teacher, mm -hmm. but he, he really helped me. Cause I was like, I, I, I had things. Everyone has things they never want to talk about. They never want that. They, they, I'm never going to talk about that. I'm never going to write about that, but everyone needs to because it help, helps you get through it. Even if you never share it, you don't have to share what you write, but everyone should write about what they say they'll never write about. Mm -hmm. Because everyone, while you can feel the, like the emotion that you have for that situation, seeing it written down is different. Like you go, okay, um, you get because now you can take it like you're not the person feeling it and just read it and go, oh, I'm, I'm hurting about this a lot more than I thought I was. Mm -hmm or why is this such a big deal to me? And it, it really helps you get through it. And I, I started doing that towards the end of class too. And uh, towards the end of the semester and he, like at the end of, of the school year, he pulled me aside and he's like, man, I'm, I'm, it's been a pleasure teaching you and showing you, like seeing you grow from the guy who didn't know how to write a poem week one to a guy who's now writing about stuff he said never write about. Mm -hmm. And and I, I love the teacher I, so much. And like I said, I've, I've published, I think I have three books now and I'm working on my fourth one, just writing everything I can. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I owe him everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, let's talk about the, the first book from um, that you read the opening poem with called um, The Context. Um, yeah, no, no context. No context. Do you want me to go ahead and, and pull that one up? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll go ahead and, and just take a look at that. Give me a moment. Yeah, so this is actually my uh, my second book. It just had, I really like that poem. That poem's one of my favorite poems that I wrote, so I figured I'd share that one. Um, and the other two poem, the other two books I wrote have very specific uh, topics in them, and this one didn't. So I was having the hardest part about this book was trying to figure out a name. And so after I realized that none of the poems really went together or conveyed the same meaning or touched on the same topics, I said, you know what? They all have no context together. It's just a collection of poems. Ah, so I with no context. Right. Right. Okay, so it's basically kind of like a, a potpourri of, of poems by by Alex. Yeah, just a collection of random stuff. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and is there anything else you'd like to share with us about no context? Um, no, that's pretty, that one's pretty self-explanatory on that one. Uh, okay. I, I, it has some of the long, I tried getting into longer poems for that one because my first book, the, the, um, the red one, is a, uh, very a lot of short poems like I have a lot of poems that are under eight lines in that book uh, and this one I tried to get into a more longer form but mm -hmm. I, other than that it's just a collection of random poems right right okay all right very good let's let's go ahead to the um the red one with love and leftovers yeah so um this book is was the first book I published and it's all about uh kind of love and loss and that's the, the main title, uh, Saudashi, uh, is actually Portuguese. And it's considered one of the hardest words to translate. Um, it is, it, it translates to a deep emotional state of melancholic longing for a person or thing that is absent. So it's kind of just like a feeling that you're never going to feel again. And you, you miss the feeling of feeling it. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a, like a pure thing that everyone understands. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're never going to be the same person again. You're never going to have that same feeling again. Mm -hmm. And so this one's all about those ooey gooey feelings that everyone feels, but no one wants to talk about. Um, if you have the book uh, right next to you, Alex, um, can you just share one, um, you know, random that, that you'd like to, so we get a little more feel for the love and leftovers? Sure, 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 sure. Um, yeah, this one. This one's called The Long Trip Home. 
She got out in Hoboken, a simple kiss goodbye with ruby lips that scarred. I'll see you when the sun sets east. Don't forget me. Like a racer on green, I peeled out of the 7-Eleven, leaving behind the stink of five-day-old hot dogs rotting under the heat lamps, cigarettes between the lips every $5 whore and the last passenger I'd ever have. She rode shotgun for too long, a hitchhiker that had found a home in me, leaving behind an imprint on my car's other seat that I would never be filled, a void occupied now by faceless lovers and the carcasses of fast food burgers. Only remnants of her love remain, a crack in the dash from a night of intimacy, long red fibers that would be pulling out of my car until it rusted to dust, and the faintest odor of apple shampoo infused into the headrest, a love never to be seen again. Thunder rolled under the hood as I hit it middle gear, chasing the sun on the long road trip home. Mm. I'm going to stop this screen share for just a moment, if you don't mind, okay. Alex. Um, share with us that, that poem. I see a little bit of similarity and style with that and the one you opened up with. Uh, share a little more. Um, if you would, it seems like you really like to, to tell a story and these are experiences that, that, that you've, you've kind of gone through and you're being very observant and, and then kind of getting into your feelings. Tell us a little bit more about this and your process, if you would, please. Yeah, so I, I really do enjoy, I hate talking about myself, which is so weird because I love writing about the feelings I have. Um, it's so much easier to write about it than it is to talk about it because when you're talking you have to it, unless you're sitting there going extremely slowly thinking over every single word you can say something you don't mean and so i don't know it, it, it this these books are almost like a get get to know me <laughs> understand why i am the way that i am um i do love telling a story um I, I always have, again, that, that's the part of me that wanted to be a writer, but fell in love with poetry. So I, uh, yeah, so I try to tell a story while also making it poetic in its uh, imagery and it's sometimes, I, like I said, I, I rhyme some of my poems, not all of them, and uh, just trying to make it entertaining and not just rambling about myself. Mm -hmm. um, my what I do to really get in the mood to write is I actually have a list. I have, I have a YouTube playlist of a couple hundred songs that I just looked the playlist titled poetry fuel. And it's any kind of song that I feel an emotional connection to. Like when I feel here at the first time, I just like have to stop and go, Oh, stop everything I'm doing and just listen to the song. I'm like, oh, okay, this song really hits home or it even has just one line in it. I really like, or anything like that and it, I I just I get an idea in my head I always have a notebook on me at all times I, I have a notebook or my phone or notepad anything to just because ideas come at all points in time I, I literally I, I yesterday I got honked at because I stopped I was that guy who didn't go on green <clears throat> because I was sitting there scribbling something in my notebook I'm like no 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 I, song just came on the radio I have to write this down and so and that was actually what my next poetry professor told me was about. He's like, sometimes you'll just have a line and that's a brick. You need to save that brick because eventually you're going to have enough bricks in your closet that you can build a house. Mm -hmm. And that's what the poem is. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes like, like what really, really ironically, the long road trip home, the line that really started that I wanted to write a line or a poem about the line, I'll see you when the, when the sun sets east, don't forget me. Because that's a, just a way of saying goodbye. The sun's never gonna set east. So it's a matter of, I'll never see you again, please don't forget me. And I, I, I actually found that scribbled on a brick on FSU's campus. And I was like, that is a beautiful, beautiful line and sentiment. And I need to write a poem about this. Mm -hmm. And so one night while just listening to, to songs I, I remembered what it felt like to basically say goodbye to somebody for the, for the last time. And I said, I need, to, I need to write this now. And so at like two in the morning, I was laying in bed listening to poetry, my poetry fuel playlist, about to go to sleep. I, jo I jolted out of bed. I'm like, nope, gotta write this right now. And I, I cranked it out. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And so wow. that's, that's kind of what I do. I'll always, always be thinking about it, always be listening. And even if you're not like yesterday, I tried to, or last year, I tried to write a poem every single day for an entire year, which is extremely more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Uh, just because it, it, it turns poetry into work as opposed to just letting it flow. But even if you're not writing from like a feeling of like, I have to write about this because I'm feeling it right now and you're forcing it, you're still writing about something true and you can come back to it later with some of those bricks that you found from songs or listening to people talk or just whatever, finding scribblings on bricks on FSU campus and put that into the poem that you wrote and make something real. Mm -hmm. You have an amazing um, sense of discipline. Um, you know, you always have your journal nearby you. Um, you, you know, you have this really cool like uh, poetry fuel playlist. I, I love that. And then when you get those like inner, like, you know, um, almost kind of like a command, you know, like you at like two in the morning, three in the morning, you know, you know, it's like, okay, you have to write about this now. Like you, you're very much in tune with that and you, and not only in tune with it, but you follow through with it. You have that, you know, sense of like, okay, focus and, and discipline and then, you know, creating uh, the poetry as well. Do you, do you find that as well? Like, do you see yourself like that? Um, as somebody who's trying to make a, uh, just, just to write because I enjoy writing, calling it disciplined is, is, is strange to me, but you, yes, I can see how you could, you can see that. Um, it, it's more of just being compelled almost like, okay. like I'll, I'll hear a line and I'll, I'll write that down. And then my brain goes, Oh, but this should be the next line. And it just kind of keeps going sometimes. Like sometimes I'll just, I'll just have one line. I go, Oh, it's a good line. And then I'll end up with a whole poem at the end. Like within that second of writing down the line of my whole poem, like it's not a matter of me just, I don't know. I feel like you can, I don't know, just discipline just doesn't feel right to me. Okay. Because like, I kind of just write whenever I think about it and think about stuff. And it's a matter of taking a few, 30 minutes to an hour every day to just get in the zone of thinking about stuff. Like a lot of people call it meditating. My form of meditating is sitting down with my poetry fuel playlist on shuffle mm -hmm. and just writing down thoughts and occasionally a poem will come out of the scribbles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's interesting. So we would take out the word discipline and, and maybe use your word, you said like compel or, or yeah. perhaps it's just, it's a strong drive. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I always, I always like I, said, I, like I said earlier, I always wanted to be a writer from a very young age. I knew I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, I like in about middle school and high school, I said I didn't want to. I, I understood that while well, I wanted to be a writer, um, having enough money for food is important, and so I changed. Like I, I went to college for something completely different, and then halfway through, I said I don't enjoy this. I I want to be a writer. I, I changed it to be a, to being an English major or a writing major, and so I don't know. I always knew I would write. I guess. Mm -hmm whether I, whether it was the best idea for me or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that came at an early age, you said. You were yeah. in first grade and all of a sudden you had this like notion, this awareness of like, okay, I'm gonna be a writer and this is, this is it. And that was like the trajectory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I never really had a choice. <laughs> and I'm okay with that 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, in your, your poetry, and um, some of the different things that we, you know, we've gotten to hear about and, and that you've discussed. Um, in terms of, like you said, some of the poetry you look back upon and, and, you, and you had a sense of like, wow, you know, what was going on and, and, and kind of feeling things from, from that moment and then kind of where you're at now. Um, in terms of the self-discovery aspect and, and whatnot, um, for you, where does that happen? Like, it, does it happen during the actual writing of the poetry? Is it in the aftermath once the, the poem is complete? Is it something completely different? How, how is that in terms of being revealing to you and getting to know yourself, um, where, where does that take place? How is that kind of in the mix for you? So 
I would say the therapeutic aspect is probably during the writing aspect. Like when I'm, when I'm writing it, I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, this feels so good to finally get out. Like I'm like, even though I'm not talking to anybody about it, writing it down is kind of talking to myself about it. And then, but then I do what my, my you know, the, the professor told me, which is all right, now tear it apart and rebuild it. It'd be better. Mm-hmm. And as I'm, as I'm reworking it to be an actual like working poem, it, I start to lose some of the sen- like not sentimental. I, don't know, I start to lose some of the the raw emotion I've had about it, and I start to understand why I felt that way. Because I'm like I said that like I write down like, I I write down how I was feeling, and then I need to go okay now make that poetic. And as I'm doing that, I start to go well, why did I ever feel like that? Why was why what was so raw about this this situation that made me feel that emotion? Mm-hmm. And so I start to understand not only like how I felt but why I felt that way and it makes me understand myself a little bit and it helps you it helps me forgive myself because everyone's done things they're not they don't like but when you understand why you did why you felt certain ways and why you you did certain things it really helps you forgive yourself and understand yourself more um and then what helps like I I have copies of my own books not for egotistical reasons I just thumb through them because I don't after I'm done, it's kind of like all the emotion I felt is kind of spent on that. Like I, I can't, I, like just thinking about that situation again is not gonna feel as emotionally charged to me because I've already talked to myself about it by writing it down. So it's, it's interesting to go back and read those poems. When I read The Long Road Trip Home just a couple minutes ago, I was like, wow, I, I really, really had an emotional, like just, I, don't know, I was very upset about the situation when it had happened. And now it's like, I, that was just my past. It is what it is. And so it helps you understand that while it was real then and it's real now, you're going to move on. So any situation I'm in now where I'm like, wow, I'm really upset about this. I can go, yeah, but look at all the other stuff you were upset about. And now you're good. And it helps you kind of go, okay, this is temporary. We're going we're gonna to make through this. And that, that really helped me when I was in a depressive state for a couple of years yeah life life hits you hard sometimes but it's gonna be okay and that's what poetry really helped me realize and that's just and again you don't have to be a poet for that just look back at what you were feeling a year ago you're like oh wow that was important to me a year ago i don't even think about that anymore because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. for the longest time i was carrying around all this emotional baggage of stuff i'd feel every time I, every day i'd think about it and i was just like wow i'm gonna be sad for the next 30 minutes that's what i'm doing now i have to schedule that into my my day and now it, it kind of helped me get through that. So mm-hmm. that's, it's a, it's a both thing. Well, while writing it, you feel better. And then afterwards, you feel better going forward. Mm-hmm. Well, you beautifully express that. And it's just so powerful, all that poetry and the creative process um, has afforded you. And you, you embrace it so openly. And, and it's so beautiful, uh, you know, to hear that. Like you're like, you know, you're, there's something going on, like emotionally, something that you're experiencing, and it's, it's not really feeling so good, you know, but it's it's real, and then you open yourself, and you say, okay, I'm not going to be feeling so hot for this next half hour, 40 minutes, but you kind of know, okay, I'm going to get this out, and I'm going to kind of assess it, get it out, let it breathe, and and release it, and, um, and it's amazing, the process of forgiveness that that you experience. I mean, the whole thing is really, really beautiful and how, you, and the whole way that you perceive it. I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's really, you know, quite amazing. All of this, you know, from, from your writing and from your poetry to, you know, kind of help you on, on your evolutionary journey. Yeah. It really, I, 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 I never thought it would really help. But that's what really got me into poetry was the, that it helped me, I guess, just be a better me and work through mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. Cause that, that, that class happened at the worst possible time. Like I, like I was the lowest point in my life probably ever. Mm-hmm. And so that, that, if I hadn't had that crazy professor that told me to go to a graveyard and read a poem off a witch's grave, I would be, I don't even know where I'd be right, right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love your openness. Um, do you think this is a good time to go and, and to look at one of the other pictures of one of your sure. published books? Yeah. Okay. Give me a moment and I'll go ahead and pull it up. It's 
All right, and this is the, the third one in your series, Glass House. Yeah, this is, this is the most current one. Um, this one was just about being 100% open about everything. Like you, you said, I'm, I'm so open about things. It's because I wrote this, po this book recently, which is just dives deeper into uh, just what it is, what, what, why I feel the way I feel. Uh, this is the, this is probably the most emotional book for me. Um, it might not be for everybody's like the first, the first book, Sadashi might be the most em emotional for everybody else. But for me, Glass House talks about things that it's the book of things I said, I never write about. Mm -hmm. Can you just shoot out if you don't mind, Alex, just a couple of topics that what what are some of the things that you you said you would never write about that in Glass House you have? Um. <laughs> um just admitting fault in yourself. Um. Like I have I have one called uh, "Wind in My Coat," which the poem is basically about. A, a relationship I started that I knew there wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be a happily ever after relationship, but I still entered it. No, know, knowing it was going to fail just because I was a, 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 alone. And that's just a horrible thing. And you should never do that. But it, it helped me forgive myself a little bit. I, I, I still, I think about her and uh, it's, it's still, I still like, you know, I'm not happy that I did that, but the poem helps, the book helps me see that part of me and go, okay, but why? And it, I just, I don't know. It's, it's something I never want to talk about because it's, you, you, you never want to make yourself the villain in your own story or your own poem, but I, I did because I was at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, this is just something that's just, it's, it's a rough one <laughs> for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love the title. It really conjures up a lot of imagery. Yeah. Just try to be more open. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, Alex, um, in, in all three of the books that we looked at, um, let's go ahead and just uh, look at all three at once, uh, if that's all right with you. Um, there's basically not a lot of imagery, like no context is kind of like a Malachite kind of pattern and the glass house has there's a little bit kind of space age in, in a way yeah. with, with the purples and then we have the love and leftovers with the splash. What was your thought process um, with with that if, if you could share that with us Alex. Um, I guess that was kind of me. Uh raging against the the idea of judge a book by its cover and well, now, now, now what there's nothing it, it, i don't want to i also don't want to like uh paint my readers any with any preconceived notions like if you pick up a book that has a um <clears throat> a broken heart on the front it's it, you you're gonna go into it hitting every poem to be sad and while some of the poems are sad, there was one poem, I can't remember which one, but I had a friend read and she goes, this is so uplifting. And I go, Up uplifting? This poem is super sad to me. And she's like, no, but it, it, has a, it has a feeling to it of like, while bad things may have happened, you're, you're moving on and getting better. And I was like, oh, okay. And so if I went in with what I thought, what I thought it was, which is making every cover kind of sad, they would have had a different connotation to the poem and I didn't want to I didn't want to give them any preconceived notions of the book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that very interesting all right um is there anything else you'd like to share about um the three books before I stop the screen share Alex um besides the fact they're all available on Amazon no I'm good <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure we we include the links um <laughs> right. with, with this um, I have a question for you, and, and I, I've asked other um, poets as well, and, and I'd like to know um, your take on this. Um, uh, and particularly now that we, we have a, a good feel for um, your, your poetic journey and, and your poetry and, um, you know, the storytelling and, and um, 
you know, and, and telling a story like we, we really kind of are there with you and especially how descriptive you are um, and just a couple of poems that you read. Um, when you're just like out and about, not when you're specifically writing your poetry, but you're, you're out in your neighborhood or you're walking or at the store or, or working or, or wherever you're at. Um, and in terms of how you perceive the world, um, are you ever like out and about and just the way that you're seeing things and experiencing things, maybe, you know, just from observing, from kind of being a witness, or it could be things that you're directly experiencing someone speaking to you, maybe you're in a meeting or, you know, there, there, there's, there's you with a group of friends, you're, you're at a restaurant, whatever the situation is, do you start to kind of go into a mode, like in your mind and your awareness, it's, it's, it's kind of like experiencing it on a poetic level? you know, which is very different from uh, another way. What, tell us about that. And, and does that kind of like resonate with you? So I would say yes, but not consciously. Like, like most conversations that you have or that you hear out in the world are generally shallow conversations. Like, oh, how was your weekend? Oh, good weather today. <laughs> and there's nothing much going on. But sometimes when I'm walking and I hear... I, because everyone kind of does it. You, you overhear conversations. And I, I tell all my friends that if you talk around me and you say something I like, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> like I, I, anything you say around me is subject to be stolen and put in one of my books. And so I'll just hear a line sometimes and I'll be like, oh, stealing that. And I, I j jot it down on my phone. And sometimes that's it. And then it's just, I heard that line and I go, oh, that's going to be a good line later. And sometimes I hear a line and I'm like, no one talked to me for 10 minutes. I need to write. Like I've done that before. I got and at a, at a bar and I, I, one of my friends, I can't remember what it was, but I wrote a whole poem. And I'm like, no one talked to me. And I just sat there and I wrote a poem on my phone because I'm like, that, that, that it just hit me. And like, this is it. And it was, it was a matter of it also resonated with some of the other lines I had written down already. And it is just like this, and I, anything I hear that is remotely close to being cool or it, it, poetic to me, I jot down. And even if I never use that line, I have it there in case I hear another line that kind of clicks with it. And so, uh, yeah, not, not consciously. I, I don't sit there in a conversation and go, all right, I'm going to stop the conversation now because I want to go right. It's a matter of, well, you just said something really profound that I'm going to steal that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you, you mostly mention things that you hear, um, but, uh, but in your poetry, I find it very interesting. You're, you're very descriptive with like um, the, the poems that we heard with, with the other person. Like I really got a good feeling of, of what, what she looked like and also maybe the setting and, and some things related uh, to nature as well. Do, do visual things kind of uh, clue you as well or is it more auditory for you? It's definitely more auditory. Uh, it's very rarely that I sit there and I see something and I'm like, I need to write about this because this is beautiful. Um, I, I usually add my visual details after I write down, like when I'm going back to edit. Uh, there have been a few instances where I, I saw something and I wrote a poem to match what I was seeing. Uh, for example, I went on a, a trip to Alaska and beautiful, I love Alaska. But uh, there was a sunset one day where there was like an, an island in the distance and the sun, there was like two hills on the island and the sun was setting in between the two hills. So it looked like, like, a, like a finger kind of pulling the sun down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like that, I need to go write about that. That's gonna be a fun one. And so I, 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 I jotted that one down. But yeah, it's, it's very rare that I see something and I'm like, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to write about that. Mm -hmm. So it happens, but it's very rare for me. I, I'm, I'm more into speaking and audible things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in your creative process, Alex, um, so you said like last year, every day you kind of, I, you compelled yourself, you, yeah. you, you know, to sit down. I forced, and, I forced myself to, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, to, to write a poem every day. Um, so what about now? H have you like um, reaped some benefits from that? Is that kind of like, um, you know, kind of keep like the juices going? I mean, you have this great, you know, playlist of music that really touches you and inspires you. And then that kind of is a, is a prompt 
Um, but how how was that? You know, kind of in the um, experience of already experiencing in that. How was that kind of uh, played out in in your poetry? So, to be a hundred percent honest, it kind of burned me out. Mm -hmm. uh, I my my poetry playlist at the time I had just played to death to the point that I could tell you every song on that. I could almost sing every song verbatim. Um, and I had used almost every line I had ever scribbled away. I had done almost every emotion, like every emotional thing. I, I had really tapped out of my creative energy towards the end of the year. Um, it was great for my social media following and yeah, that exploded. I got a lot of people to follow me because I was posting daily content, but um, it was hard. It's it's kind of harder for me to write now. Like I still write, I put up a whole poem about once or twice a week now. Um, and I've had to find new inspiration, which has been difficult for me. I'm still working on it. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm working through a lot of it. And it's, it was, it was hard to put your nose to the grindstone and just pump out poems every day, even if you weren't feeling it. Um, but I was, I was determined to try to keep doing that and just see what happened. And yeah, it kind of burned me out. Um, but I, now my poetry playlist has ex exploded again. I've started hearing, I'm putting new songs into it. So the rotations got a little mixed up and sometimes just hearing a different song after a song you've heard a million times gives you new context to that song you've heard a million times. And so it, it was cool to prove to myself that I could do it, but also probably not the best for the creative uh, writing aspect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I turned it into a job basically. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I, um, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so now you're kind of looking to kind of draw some new inspiration. And so what are some things you're turning to to just kind of keep things fresh and keep things real and keep things new and exciting? So I'm going back to what kind of made me want to write the first book, which is the discovery of the word Saudashi the Portuguese word of the, the longing feeling of things will never feel again. And it's again, considered one of the hardest words because it has no direct translation. It's the best translation they come up with. And so I'm working on a book that is just about foreign words or words that aren't in, for English that have very long English translations or that their translation could be turned into a poem like Saudashi or, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the word because I will butcher it. But there's a, uh, there's a Japanese word of uh, whenever I, I have a bowl break, they they repair it with gold, and it makes the, the bowl more beautiful than it was before. And it's showing that even though it was broken, it can it can still be repaired and be more, be more even better than it was previously. And so I'm just trying to take words that have difficult translations and write a poem as the translation. Mm. And I I. I don't know, I, I, as someone who learns audibly and likes to read, I, I like to play around with words a lot. So mm -hmm. that was really cool to me that there's like words that, yeah, there's no translation for it. You, you figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to write a, a book, but uh, just about words. Mm -hmm. The whole concept is so fascinating. So like you, you have a love of words and you moved away from words within the English vocabulary to other words that are foreign. So they're, you know, they're probably new to you. And they're also words that have like a mystery, have an air to them of like they're, you know, it's almost like what they convey is, is actually beyond words. And now you're kind of getting into that and kind of dissecting that and kind of like, kind of like coming up with, with um, your own, you know, poetic interpretation of that. Yeah, I'm trying, trying anyway. <laughs> not always the easiest because <clears throat> as, as I said I, as I only speak English it's a little hard to learn the translation sometimes but I'm working through it. Mm -hmm. Do you think Alex that sometimes an artist um, could be a painter, sculptor, you know any type of, of artist, poet, whatnot, you know musician, do you think that sometimes we go through um, like uh, times of incubation you know almost kind of like um, like a butterfly in a way where it's like, it's not so highly productive. It's more like you're like in a receptive receiving mode and it's not 
really the moment for you to have all this like activity and ideas and creating do you think that's part of the process or how, how do you kind of look at like the cycles and like like the movement of of time so to speak artistically so yes i i do i do believe that um to make quality work um and that's what i'm trying to do right now which is why i'm, I'm posting a lot less poems is simply I'm, I'm i'm trying to make things great so i'm i'm taking in everything i hear and see and i'm trying to turn that into what i do what I, I write um that isn't to say you can't like i did i forced it for a whole year uh, but some of those poems were not good i wrote about over 300 poems and i got two books out of it so clearly a couple hundred of those probably needed a little more incubation but um yeah 100 you, percent. you're you're not gonna sit there and make a masterpiece every every couple days you got to give yourself some time you got to give yourself time to, to look it over and, and edit it and just learn learn things about everything around you before you can just crank out a, a bestseller or a, a, like a sculpt a great sculpture or whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love your openness and your willingness to explore you know it's like you don't shut the door you keep the door open you know or if a door does seem to shut you're like well there's another door i'm going i'm going over there and and i just find that just so awesome yeah if you if you keep stopping at closed doors you're never going to get anywhere you got to keep going uh i don't know i gotta have i've kind of always had that find a way to make it work thing mm -hmm. uh, it's also kind of like sometimes we get stuck with like just having one burner on like you know like you have your stove okay there's you know typically at least four burners maybe more or less or something and you kind of like you kind of keep them all going at once that's kind of like the way i'm kind of kind of getting that that vibe from you that's that's a pretty accurate description of my life right now which is why uh the poetry is taking a little longer mm -hmm. i've been I've, uh, turned on too many of those burners and have too many too many projects going on right now mm -hmm. but uh you got to keep yourself busy yeah yeah what have we touched upon or excuse me not touched upon in your poetic journey that you'd like to share with us alex um well i i it's pretty much everything i gotta say other than some uh advice for any writer out there any person really um besides the fact that writing actually helps you it only helps you if you want it to help you so if you just write down things that are only partially true or aren't true at all about how you're feeling about yourself, it's not going to help you at all. You need to write about things that you, um, that you actually feel and are true. Like you, you keep saying I'm, I'm been so open. It's because I've been open to myself writing these books. I have it all out there. And I've, not only do I have it out there for myself, I put it out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I mean, hell, my mom got the first, she bought the first book. I got a phone call for like 10 minutes. She's like, hey, we need to talk. <laughs> I'm like, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> she, she's just like, well, are you sure you're fine? Why didn't you come talk to me about that? I'm like, I'll work it through some stuff. So like I, I, had, um, I had people that were worried about me when the first couple books came out. Um, but uh, you, you have to be honest with yourself and be actually really willing to work through it. Otherwise, it's just going to stay there forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's great great advice you have to be you have to be true to yourself absolutely mm -hmm. really kind of like almost be like a mechanic you know and kind of look under the hood and see what's there and you know aim to not judge it but you know accept it and, and kind of like you know see how how you can get that motor running yeah too many of us hear a rattling sound and go yeah it'll be fine <laughs> so you got to be willing to work through some of the stuff fix mm -hmm. fix the problems don't let them fester mm -hmm. and so, that takes a lot of self-responsibility yeah it was a hard thing to learn but that that's what helped me be like you say so open about mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. um alex we're gonna need to go ahead and wrap the show up um if you'd like sure. to offer any other closing comments and if you could let us know how we can stay in touch with you your social media and, and your books and whatnot that would be great all right. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any closing comments. Uh, just if you're uh, a writer, a poet, or just someone who wants to jot down their feelings or how to even talk, you can uh, message me on Alex and Dunlop Poetry. 
and uh, I'll talk to you. You can also follow me on that page. I post, I try, again, try to post weekly content at this point, a couple times a week, new poems or just stuff I'm working on. Like the other day, I posted just, just a line and I said, oh, line from a poem I'm working on right now. And actually I had someone message me and I'm like, hey, you want to work on this poem together? And I'm like, sure, let's talk about it. And so I don't generally like talk, working on poems with more than one person just because it's a personal thing to me, but it helped me work through um, working on a poem. So yeah, follow me on Alex Dunlop Poetry on Facebook. Um, get the books on Amazon. If you want to just talk, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you make yourself very accessible. I try to. I get, a, I get a lot of messages sometimes and it's hard to get back to everybody, but I will get back to you at some point. <laughs> Alex, thank you so much for being our guest poet for today and, and sharing about your poetic journey and, and your books and, and um, the poems that you read and, and sharing you know, about yourself. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. And much success with, with your books and uh, the ones that are out and the current one that you're working on and, and all your endeavors as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Art and Talk, we, we appreciate the time you take to watch our videos. We hope you draw some inspiration from them. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. Thank you again, Alex. Thank you again, everybody, for watching.